Hello, thank you for joining Ideal Protein's Food Hacks and Meal Preparation presentation. Our goal is to share some tips and tricks to help you with your food preparation along your IP journey. So let's think about that. If you're gonna go on a trip, you don't just decide and, and end up there, you decide where you're gonna go, why are we going, how long will it take, and even what's our plan to get there. Having a plan in place is important. So now we're gonna think about well, where are we going with this journey? You need to think about that as um, your weight loss journey and um, your health destination. And so what is that and how long will that take? So if you wanna think about what's the weight loss that you want to accomplish, divide that by two and a half pounds, uh, or excuse me, 2.5 for females and 3.5 for males, then that's approximately how many weeks you will need to be on this journey until you take your next trip to stabilization. So once you know how long it will take uh, and understand your why, that's a very powerful tool. And you need to get in your right mindset. And even that slide on the right-hand side of the screen, you know, you either can or you can't, and you have to make a decision and make your choice and stick with that. So think about the reasons that are important to you. Is it for improved health? Do you want to have different outcomes with um, uh, different health concerns that you've had? Is it about just having better hope or more optimism throughout your day, which then creates happiness if you're able to stick to your goals and accomplish them? You feel very confident with that. Just sticking to the plan is going to help you to achieve those. That's going to help you also to power life possible. Maybe there's some things that you've been wanting to get back to that you haven't been able to. So think about what your why is, and this is going to help you stay focused along the way. So what is our plan? You know, each schedule is different for each person, but these are just some suggestions is that you make a plan and you stick with it. If you write something down and you keep it like it's something part of your work, you're going to then be more likely to follow it. So uh, 8 a.m., we're expecting to maybe have their IP breakfast, and that could be one of our breakfast foods, or if you're on the go, you could do something that is a, a drink. Um, or you can have, have you know, any of the items. The IP items are all interchangeable. 9 a.m., expect to maybe have some tea or some coffee. And be sure that you're still consuming the 64 ounces of water that's required on the program. Uh, perhaps at 10 o'clock, you might have some uh, radishes or celery sticks. That's not on this list, but think about trying to eat more frequently and make a plan around that. 12 o'clock, let's plan to have your IP lunch. That does include your two cups of the select vegetables. Maybe you're even going to bring in that optional uh, unlimited category to um, give you some more volume and, and fullness in your stomach. 1.30, plan to have a branch chain amino acid drink that's there to help you to um, protect your lean mass, especially in weeks one through four as you're getting started on the program. Uh, three o'clock, maybe plan to have half of your IP snack and a water enhancer. Getting that water in and the water enhancers do count toward your 64 ounces of water that you're getting. Then at four o'clock, maybe have another tea. And if you're gonna have coffee, certainly might wanna consider having decaf. And uh, then you're gonna look at six o'clock, finishing out with your dinner. Be sure to eat the sheet and, and fix your protein source and your additional two cups of your select vegetables. And do consider having that optional salad or unlimited vegetables uh, category. The last thing that you'll be having for the day is that uh, other half of the IP snack and maybe another water enhancer, and then trying to get yourself finished with any of your eating uh, by that eight o'clock hour. And uh, that would be our complete plan that we suggest. And you can interject uh, how it might work for you. And that's best according to what your schedule is. So now we're going to share some tools and storage uh, items. I do want to mention that uh, it's important that if we never plan to fail, but we only fail to plan. So if you can plan ahead and be prepared, you're more than likely going to have some success. I do want to mention that some of the tools that we do show you in this presentation are not an IP item. So those that are outside of that, maybe were purchased on from Amazon and we don't get anything for showing these particular brands. We just want to give you the option of using this type of equipment because it's been used in, uh, already and been helpful. 
So you've got the IDO protein digital food scale. And if you don't have a food scale, this is something that's very important for you to incorporate into your journey. Measuring your food is important, whether it's the vegetables or the uh, proteins that you have at night. But what's great about this particular version is that it has the um, vegetable sheet list right on the front. So it's easy and convenient for you to access to um, know how much measuring you should do for different types of vegetables. It weighs in both grams and ounces. And if you have a, uh, whatever the dish is that you're weighing your items in, you could put on there and then zero it out. So then it removes the weight of that bowl or plate. So it's gonna give you that very uh, easy opportunity for accurate food calculations. Over here, you can change the mode between ounces for proteins and then measuring your grams and ounces for your vegetables, whichever. Uh, but you can use the sheet that's in the folder along with your own scale if you have your own food scale. So one of the other things that's been extremely helpful is using a vacuum sealer. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's the number one tool that keeps your food longer fresh longer, whether it's in the fridge or the uh, freezer. So you can put in raw meat, cooked meat, you could use this for dry goods, you could use it in cooked veggies, say if you wanted to already portion out your two cups of select vegetables that you might be adding to some broth that you have, uh, you can just pull that out of the freezer and know that it's ready to go. You can also again vacuum seal raw veggies for when you might want to add those to a salad. Rice, you're not going to have during phase one, but you might be using cauliflower rice where you could use this for later on. And uh, cold cuts and cheeses, and that's again something that would be in your maintenance phases, uh, not in your, your phase one. So the next thing I want to show you is this um, uh, We Bake silicone um, container. And you know what's nice is that these different uh, sections are all uh, allocated by one cup. So if you're deciding to make a soup, if you make a broth, your own broth, or, or if a gravy, of course, an IP1 or an IP sauce, maybe it's a tomato sauce or some sort of a uh, sauce for our pasta. But at least these sections are allow, allowing you to, um, allow, you know, you're allowed two cups of fat-free broth per day. And so that's something that you could just plop those out into a pan and add some of the vegetables that you had also in your um, vacuum sealed package. And that's gonna be very easy for you to put together. The other thing, if you have a crock pot and you cook a larger amount, I like the principle of cook once and eat twice or, or several times, but then you could just put any excess from the crock pot in the container and then save that for a later time. <clears throat> One other thing that can help you that's an idol protein uh, item is, is easy measuring your oils. It is important to measure that. You don't wanna go over with the amount of oil that you allocate, whether that's using it in your salad or putting it in some of your recipes. You have got this glass bottle that you can buy from idol protein and very easy to use with our recipes. And you've got some options here for um, Chef Penny has a few different uh, recipes that are uh, available to you. Uh, one last thing that is a really, really game changer, I think, is this sous vide. It's basically a water bath and it heats up uh, the water to a perfect temperature and that's some degree that you set. And you can do all different types of foods in here. You can do it from a frozen uh, or fresh perspective. You just let it sit and simmer if you're gonna be heating it back up and it's gonna show you what type of temperatures that you're gonna to need to use, but it's ready to go. And what's great about this is that it tastes the same as when you cooked it, if you're using something that's been um, uh, vacuum sealed. You can also use this. Uh, beef is a great option to cook in this. It gets to a perfect temperature, depending on how what is your um, desired um, cooked uh, way. Uh, one last thing that we want to show you is a food processor. What's helpful about this is just the convenience of being able to make portions ahead of time and then perhaps save some for later. Uh, chayote uh, is a very hard uh, piece of fruit, so you could actually, um, excuse me, not fruit, vegetable, and then you can just cut that up into cubes and then make this into a puree so that you can create it with an applesauce with some other items that uh, you can get a recipe for. Cauliflower, another one that's very easy to make with the food processor because cauliflower is very difficult to shop up unless you wanna do it in a riced fashion, but you could make basically a smash if you just add a little bit of garlic and some other, um, some oil <clears throat> and some spices and have a really very tasty option for you there. And 
that would be something that you could throw into a soup or you could add to a salad and uh, that could be your meal and, and very quickly prepared. Cabbage is a great option to use and it is uh, available to, I mean, it, it's another thing that's a difficult vegetable to chop. So this is a great way to create a coleslaw and it's a good source of fiber. And so that might be an option for you to use that vegetable. The Vidalia cutter, very easy to use with celery or onion. You can use turnips for some home fries. Also rutabaga is a good option, which are both uh, phase one compliant. If you wanna chop up your vegetables such as cucumber in tinier pieces, but this has several different sizes available to you. And again, you know, cabbage, a great option. Potatoes, not necessarily something you're gonna be using on phase one, but it's something you can use this piece for later on. Eggs, another thing, if you were trying to make, um, you know, add that to a salad would be very, very helpful to section. And you can do it in either the smaller cubes or uh, bigger ones. IP recipes are even easier with all these different food hacks. And so we've got lots of different recipes to so please reach out to your coach to ask them about where you can access those. But the food scale, so important, whether it's IPs or you find your own, but please, please measure your food. The food process is very helpful as well as the cutter. We're just trying to help you to expedite and, and uh, be able to make cooking fun and easy and that you're prepared. So when you're prepared and have a plan, you're not gonna fail. Some things to think about is um, these large containers, you know, if you wanted to make casseroles or a meatloaf or lots of different options for you to use these. And don't be afraid to cook in bulk because if you can store stuff in the freezer by using that vacuum seal, you can keep it and it's very easy to come home after a long day. And if you wanna make something really quick that's already allocated in the appropriate sizes uh, identified and you can sort through them, even if you had this container sitting in your freezer, you could have those foods kind of listed out and, and itemized or sectioned in different um, areas. So, this is a fun thing that you could either mount underneath of your cabinet or you could just leave on your counter, but having spices handy and, and cooking should be fun. And so, you know, a lot of times our cabinets are maybe overloaded with those cans, some might be expired. And, you know, imagine how much fun it might be if the spices are right at your fingertips and you could start to, um, add those into the different recipes that you're making. And if you like and make it fun, you might be more likely to do it. This hydroponic garden, uh, I think was uh, purchased from Amazon for about a hundred dollars. And you know, you can't garden during the winter time, especially depending on where you are in the country with the weather. And so these come with three different types of seed packets. You can get herbs, certain lettuces, or vegetables, and it doesn't take very long to grow. So you'll have things readily available to you. And it's kind of a fun process. And maybe, uh, you know, it, it's something that you share with others that might be in your home. Another option for you with regard to just having some herbs available to you uh, to cook in a quick fashion would be to cut up some herbs and place them in one of the little small slots. You could add your uh, allocated olive oil or grapeseed. And then that way, when you are cooking one of those soups or cooking something on the um, chicken or meat or vegetables, they're just readily available to go. The other thing to do possibly with either lemons uh, or a lime is to squeeze that juice into one of the pieces. And then if you're interested to have that added to your water later on, and maybe you put in a little bit of the rind in each of the different cups, it's easy and accessible and um, just gives you some flavor pretty quickly. Um, one other thing that you might want to consider doing with this is if you are someone that does use your own milk in your coffee, you're only allowed one ounce per day. And so over you know, a period of time, that container of milk may, may spoil. So what you could do is just fill those little containers with uh, you know, the one ounce, and then that way you have it ready to go whenever you're ready to um, add that into your coffee. So why should you use these hacks? Well, it's important to even think about it, especially right now, to save money. Uh, if you're gonna be cooking in bulk, that also is gonna help you to save time. And then being more prepared is gonna help you to stay on protocol because that's the most important thing is just helping you to have some tools at your fingertips so you can stay on track and less waste. I think we all you know, wanna make sure that we're trying to not create waste uh, you know, when you're, you have extra things that spoil. 
So some food tips to think about uh, when you're preparing some of your foods is you should really blanch all the vegetables before freezing. On the next slide, there's going to be a document that shows you what is the times that you can spend on blanching certain types of vegetables. So they're gonna taste just as good as when you um, make them the first time fresh. If you wanted to wrap cucumbers in paper towels, that's going to help to uh, them last longer. If you buy any of those containers of spinach or lettuces, you could just uh, take a paper towel and put them on top of that and turn it upside down. And that is going to help it last a little bit longer. Same thing with romaine lettuce is just pull that out and, and of, the, of the bag and then rinse it, wrap it in a paper towel, and then you can put it back in the fridge and it will last longer. With lemons, you could actually store them in a jar full of water and they will last up to a month. Lemon, limes, not so much, but it's still very helpful to have as an option. You could also store vegetables in mason jars or in a glass. That's, celery is one that you could even add a little bit of water to and it helps to keep them crisp. And the one thing to remember is that you never want to vacuum seal any warm or hot foods. You wanna let it cool to room temperature because then otherwise you might have some freezer burn and it may not taste the same, but it's gonna last longer if you just let it cool. And um, so I think we have uh, the uh, option for this document here down in the right-hand corner. If you wish to download that, please take a look at that. And that's gonna help you with some guidelines on doing it yourself. Uh, blanching your, your vegetables. So we have reached our final destination. I hope that I, you have um, learned some tips and I wish you the best of luck with all of these items and things uh, and finishing your journey successfully. Have a wonderful day.